So, breaking news, and this is not April Fool's, I'm telling you now. Brody Kostecki, the 2023 Supercars Champion, is back. And he's back with Erebus. <laughs> Welcome back to the LTM podcast powered by Slipstream Autosport. I'm your host, Daniel, and today we've got an exciting topic to talk about as uh, Brody Kostecki, our 23 Supercars champion, has announced his return uh, to Supercars. He'll be racing at Topor with Erebus Motorsports. So this is not something I personally thought was going to happen. Um, I honestly thought he was gone for the year, or at least he wasn't going to be with Erebus. Um, but apparently that's all gone out the window, and... He's back with Erebus once again. Time of recording this podcast, Brody is actually doing a test session uh, at Winton today. Um, so um, I have seen some footage and he does seem quite happy and positive about it. Um, and Barry, again, once again, is hiding it under the rug. But we'll get into that uh, a little bit after. But uh, let's have a quick look at um, a bit of a timeline uh, leading up to this moment here. So because it, it, it will make a lot more sense if we run through what's going on. So. Oh, actually, before this, also disclaimer, take everything with a grain of salt. Not a lot of information has been revealed. Not not a lot of stuff has been said. And despite this, you know, still, I said it, I, I, um, I commented on Supercar's talk on one of his videos about um, basically is, we're on a massive roller coaster, except we're blindfolded. That's exactly how it feels right now with the Brody Kostecki Erebus drama. Um, so take that as you will. Uh as we go through the timeline. So back in Adelaide in uh, last year, obviously the last round of the Supercars Championship, Brody and Erebus both win the Drivers and Teams Championship. All as well. They had a cracking year, fantastic year. And then apparently it all went south from there. Um, from what I've read, uh, there was apparently a little fight between or an argument uh, which led to a fight between Barry and Brody um, uh, regarding some things. And, you know, it one thing led to another and uh, Brody went super quiet and uh, Erebus was also quiet um, until we heard some news in January that Brody is not racing at round one, uh, which was a massive shock. And not only that, though, uh, Coca-Cola, their sponsor that they had uh, when they won the championship, also pulled out as well as many other sponsors. And we were all just left like, what? Um, I remember Alex and I were actually going to make a podcast, like a pre-season preview for Supercars, and then that happened. So we had to do that first, and it was insane. So, yeah, it still is amazing. It's been four months, and very little of that has been said. Like, we haven't even heard the full story. Uh, Brody is yet to actually reveal his side of the of the incident. Uh, and also in saying that, Barry or and Betty haven't said anything either, so... There you go. <laughs> it's very, uh, very weird at the moment. Um, so, yeah, um, the problem with that is obviously Coke had a multi-year deal with the team and then they pulled out halfway through um, after that. And then it was getting a bit weird. And then obviously round one came. They announced Todd Hazelwood to replace Brody, who was actually going to be co-driving for the team. Uh, and he actually brought TFH along as a sponsor for the team. Um, now that, by the way, in terms of TFH, I don't know what the deal with that is, whether it's going to be a limited thing. Cause at the moment, um, Brody's actually testing a TFH car, uh, with, well, with the stickers on the car. So I don't know if they're going to be all year or is it just going to be a little bit? I don't know. I don't really know the full story for that agreement, but all I'm aware is Todd Hazelwood brought that sponsor to the team. So if it wasn't for Todd, they would be in shambles right now. So um, and speaking around one, there was an apology from, you know, Barry and Betty apology. As I say, it wasn't really an apology in my opinion. It was more of a sob story without the story part. Um, it was really pointless in my opinion. I have to be quite honest about that. It was definitely, you know, it wasn't, it didn't say anything like it. I, just, I didn't care personally. Um, personally for me anyway, so that happened, and then Todd did well in la yada yada He raced at the GP. They had multiple top 10 finishes. And then all of a sudden, whoosh, Brody Kostecki is back. 
And not only that, um, Todd has also obviously left the team. Well, drop, full driver part of it. Uh, so he'll be doing co-drive duties. But all of a sudden, Brody Kostecki is back. But the thing is with that, um, he had to ditch his personal sponsors uh, in order to join the team, um, according to Peter Adderton. Now, I forgot to mention, actually, Peter Adderton. Back during the Bathurst 500 round one, uh, Peter Adderton actually made T-shirts... Uh, saying bring back Brody uh, or something like that. Uh, so he was real. He was really supportive about bringing Brody back into supercars. Uh, he was definitely against Erebus for it. Um, so that's what happened. Um, basically, a little backstory. Peter Adderton. I know. I'm sorry. By the way, I'm sorry. This is all over the shop. Just like this story here. But uh, basically, Peter Adderton. Supported Brody throughout his whole entire supercar career with Boost as a backer. Uh, him and Paul Morris have uh, worked together very and uh, brought him up the ranks and brought him where he is now. Um, so keep that in mind when I'm, when I'm about to say is he had to actually cut Boost out of the sponsorship deal or whatever it was. He had, he had to get rid of Boost to be able to race supercars again with the team. And this is a uh, this is actually a post from Peter Adderton over on his Instagram page. Um, this is literally quote to quote. Uh, for those who are asking, yes, I got a call from Brody today telling me he was going back to Erebus and one of the conditions was Betty demanded he removed all Boost Mobile Australia and other sponsors who supported him with his helmet. Uh, we are disappointed and sad, to be honest, after all the years of support we gave Brody and felt we would have he would have said no, but he clearly didn't. That's for Brody to say, why not me? We live and we learn. I guess the Let Brody Race t-shirts worked. Um, obviously, you know, as referenced before with those t-shirts of Bathurst. So, yeah, so Brody, in order to race at Erebus again, looks like Brody was given an ultimatum to either race or... Uh, be you know hanging out hang out with his personal sponsors who brought him up the ranks um so i don't know how much you know it is see it's another thing it's a tricky thing we don't know a lot about this and it's unfortunate because even the only thing erebus have said is they just announced brody's back they didn't even tell us about any boost sponsor issues. They didn't tell us anything about that. That was Peter Adderton who put up, who actually put a thing on social media. That's the only way we found that out. So they're still hiding under a tablecloth um, while also saying mean stuff. Technically, you know what I mean. Not not literally, but you get what I mean. Um, so a lot has been put under a rug. Um, so Erebus are definitely, you know, not saying anything. But it is a real shame to see. Um, first off, I am excited and happy to see Brody back in the car. It's where he belongs. He belongs in a race car. It's also great to see the number one car. But unfortunately, it has left a sour taste in uh, our sport. And uh, I saw um, someone commented on uh, Slipstream Autosports TikTok. Uh, there's no moral in supercars. And unfortunately, at the moment, that is true. Um, it's... Like I said, I don't know the full story between Brody and Erebus, but it is quite disappointing the fact that all this commotion was for nothing, pretty much, just for Brody to race for them again, just with no sponsors. Like, it's it's weird. It, it, it's just odd. Like, I'm so stunned and puzzled um, over the whole thing here. Um, and it is rather unfortunate and rather disappointing that it even had to happen at all. Um... So I, I don't know what brought Brody back. And, uh, the, yeah, the, it's just, it's unfortunate that he ditched um, his boost and his personal sponsors just to race again for that team that, you know, had the disagreement to begin with. I I really don't know what to say. It's really disappointing. But uh, let me know in the comments below what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this um, because it's definitely a hot topic for sure. Um, and it'll be interest. It'll probably continue to play out all year long. Um, and it is again. It's rather disappointing. I do apologise that I'm all over the shop, but uh, I am trying to process this. I know it's been day three since the announcement now, and uh, I'm still puzzled. Um, it still hurts my brain, and the fact that it happened in January is still, you know. <laughs> but uh, but with that being said, let's get rid of all the controversy stuff out the way, and let's talk about how he's going to go for the rest of the year. So, 
if he go if he goes well, no, sorry, if he races all year, which is mo- mostly likely. Um, question is, can he uh, bring the championship fight to Brock Feeney and Will Brown, who are currently leading at the moment? Um, yeah, I reckon he can. If he's as good as he was last year, if he gets back up to form straight away, of course it has been four or five months since he's actually been in a supercar. Um, of course, today his, is his first day driving it. Um, he might, if he can get up, if he can get back on his feet really quickly, then no doubt, I reckon he, it'll be a close championship fight to the end. Um, obviously, he has got zero points heading into round three, whereas everyone else has got a decent amount. So it'll be very interesting to see how that plays out. But uh, no, I, I reckon um, we've seen what those cars can do. We've seen what bro- um, Todd and LeBrock can do in the sit in the anywhere from top five to a top twelve. Um, they've done pretty well with what they've got. Uh, it's still the same team from last year. It's still the same championship winning team. It's just a little bit bare and bones. Um, so just a bit of a black and white car at the moment. So keep that in mind. So the formula is still there. Uh, we've still got the championship winning team with the championship winning driver. Um, so who knows? See, see what happens. But I, I highly reckon that Brody can do well. Um, Maybe Topol will be interesting. Uh, I think Topol will actually be a fantastic place to start uh, his season, given how no one has raced a Topol before in the supercar. So um, this will be a great opportunity for him to um, get to grips with the car again for the for the year um, and get back into proper racing. And it's a fantastic because, you know, like I said, no one has driven there before in that car. So everyone... It's everyone's ball game, pretty much. So I'm excited for that. I think that was a smart move by Brody if that was planned already. I seriously don't know. But, um, yeah, we'll see how the year plays out in terms of Brody and the controversy. Um, now, yeah, it'll be interesting. But let me know in the comments what you think. I do apologize. This this podcast is a bit all over the shop. Um, it's more of a just an opinion piece uh, regarding this story. Um, again, it is really disappointing. That's all I can say. It's really disappointing um, for supercars and Australian motorsport. And also, it's not a great look for young drivers um, looking at inspiration for these guys who ditch their personal sponsors just to race a car. Um, and Ivan in Slipstream Motorsports, our partners, made a he made a very good point on his TikTok that um, no, moral is more important than winning a championship and he is 100% correct about that and unfortunately supercars lacks moral at the moment and hopefully we can see more moral in the future but I'm going to wrap this up um, hope you guys did enjoy this I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments and socials below as well check out my socials in the description if you want to reach me there I'm more than happy to have a chat about all this and uh, check out my TikTok as well where we that's where our, all our new stuff is as well check out our formula one and supercar motor gp podcasts uh which will all be on youtube and spotify uh, if you're on spotify give a five star rating it helps us get out there and make sure you follow and subscribe anywhere you are uh, and stay tuned for next week where we'll be doing our topo um preview uh, and also this week sorry um motorsport report will be coming out tomorrow it was actually meant to be coming out today but i had to delay it for this brody video uh and then we got a MotoGP qualifying review on Saturday for Coda, uh, and then, oh, sorry, Sunday, and then Monday will be the race review, so stay tuned for that. Um, so it should be, should be a busy couple of weeks um, for LTM, so be sure to stay tuned and subscribe and like and all that stuff, good, all that good stuff to get updated. So that's all from me. Bye for now.